When we're talking about ADHD, something that people are really interested in almost always is how they can control distractions or their distractibility. How they can influence or decrease the extent to which they sort of impulsively get their focus pulled away to something else. Yesterday I talked about a very simple and straightforward hack to moderate and control the influences that come into your life by just, you know, doing some real-time editing as soon as something pops up, looking away. And that's great. <laughs> I want to talk about something else that's even more basic and more fundamental than that, which is the number one source of distraction and interference with our focus in the 21st century. You'd never guess what it is. Who could have thought? But seriously, those things are toxic <laughs> for our uh, ability to focus. Unless we do a few, what I consider to be extremely important things. First of all, all of this is underpinned by addressing, actually look, before I go any further, I'll just say, you know, I'm Jack, I'm an ADHD coach, I have ADHD. And on this channel, I share things that might help you. So we know who I am, what I do, and let's proceed. So <clears throat> all of this that I'm about to say here, all this stuff regarding phones, some not even that long ago, <laughs> a couple of decades, probably when most of the people watching this were still kids, like very young, maybe, but still kids, people couldn't just get a hold of you 24 7 or even every you know the whole waking day it was just understood and accepted that people wouldn't wouldn't get back to you immediately that you might have to wait some time for a reply that might be because you might call their home phone because we didn't have mobiles <laughs> you might have to leave a voicemail that they might check and get back to you that evening we weren't really you know emails especially pre-emails, you would write a letter. That would get posted, that would take a few days. That would take a few days to get back to you. The entirety of human history, until like the last 0.01% probably, when we've had the internet, when we've had smartphones, when we've had mobile phones at all, really, up until that point, no one ever expected, oh, I'd like to contact Jack. I'll probably get a hold of him immediately. There was never an expectation, and now suddenly it is. And suddenly, because everyone else is doing it and it's assumed that that's what you'll do, that's assumed that that's, well, we all buy into it. We go, oh, oh, I'm supposed to. Every single morning or every single day, I'm supposed to check my emails and stay on top of all of them. These people contacted me yesterday. I can't keep them waiting. That would be unbearably wrong of me. Oh, I got some phone calls today and some text messages. Must reply immediately. Why? We never used to do this. But the reason that we have to is because there's the expectation that we are supposed to. I don't subscribe to that. I never signed that contract that whereupon I agreed to those terms. Yes, I will be available whenever anyone else wants. I never agreed to that. I don't agree to that. So I'm not available like that. <laughs> my phone, if you call my phone, you'll get a voicemail that says something like, hi, you've reached Jack. This phone is not attended. It is checked once a week or something. I can't remember who calls their own number, but it's something like that to snap the expectations in other people not to expect to hear back from me that day, or maybe at all. Because <laughs> I didn't subscribe to be contacted like that. It's the same for my emails. Don't expect to reply straight away. I'll get to it when it suits me. But let's go further than that. Simply just owning one of these devices, whether you do some things like that and try to manage expectations or whatever, doesn't, it still means that, you know, 
friends, family, people that you have given that permission, oh yeah, you, you can contact it, you can contact me. If you give them that permission, they will take it. How many times has it been, you know, 9 p.m. and you have about, you know, you're having, you've just finished dinner and you're about to go to bed and your phone dings and then you pick it up. Just to see who, who messaged you. And it was your friend or your mum said some nice, innocent, little harmless thing, like, hope you had a nice day, good night. And then, because you were on your phone, you close the messages, and then you're scrolling, you know, you're, you know, and then it's an hour later. Because something occurred that just took your focus. And then suddenly, because the notification, the noise, intruded upon your consciousness, it brought this thing to your attention. And all the other wiring and patterns that you have related to using your phone for all the other purposes, well, they're going to kick in automatically. It's kind of inevitable. And then you're scrolling. Were you planning to scroll? No. But that occurred because the notification was possible. So here's really what I'm trying to get to as I try to bring all of this together. First of all, this assumption that you can and that you should be contactable by anyone at all hours is nonsense. So if you don't have a do not disturb function automatically set up on your phone, I think that's insane and I can't imagine how you function. <laughs> I would recommend that you make it quite extreme. I very rarely, I would recommend that people very rarely have their phone on not do not disturb mind. If I could ask you during any point of your day, hey, how frequently would you like to be disturbed? What would your answer to that be? You'd probably say, oh, 0% of my day, please. I would like to be disturbed. Strong argument to have do not disturb mode on 100% of the time. <laughs> oh, but what if it's an emergency? How often is it an emergency? And if it is, <laughs> set up do not disturb mode so that if they call repeatedly, it will get through. And if it's emergency, an emergency, they will. So, there's that. Also, I want you to know that you are allowed to block people without explanation or justification just because you don't want to hear from them. You're allowed to block people whenever you want, for as long as you want, and you can unblock them or not. You love your... your brother to absolute bits, most important person in the world to you. And it's being a bit annoying and he keeps sending you cute pictures of cats, and you ask him to stop and he keeps going, block his ass for like 24 hours and unblock it. Very easy. That's a way that you can control the things that come into your life or not. Send him a text. Hey, I blocked you the last 24 hours because I didn't want to see the cat shit. Cat pictures. <laughs> uh, did I miss anything important? You're entitled to do that, I guess. That should be his response. Because you are. My point there really is just Maybe that's too specific an example, but you hopefully get what I'm trying to say here. This idea that you are allowed to prevent people interrupting your life. And that is such a revolutionary concept to so many people that it's worth making a so far nine minute video on the topic. Will you use this every single day? Maybe, probably not. But will having come this far through the video mean that maybe you might use it occasionally if and when you ever need to? Then awesome. That might be one day or a few hours of productivity or focus or just you time that you're permitted to just enjoy without interruption. Oh, even better, just turn the whole thing off more. Definitely do that. <laughs> Maybe could have led with that. <laughs>
probably the number one productivity hack, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish with this, I believe. I've done quite a lot of presentations at, at universities or whatever, similar things. <laughs> and those organizations, often the IT or the tech department has asked me, Jack, that's, that's you know, interesting stuff, but what are some apps that we can get students to use on their phones to help them focus and be productive? My response is generally along the lines of, the thing with phones is that phones have internet and internet is the devil of productivity. <laughs> so, I can't recommend apps other than a big metal box that you put your phone in and put a padlock on and lock it. I'm sure you've seen the timed lock boxes. They're the best productivity app going around. <laughs> and then you do the rest of your whatever time management on a pen and paper, for example. That's my recommendation generally. Are there exceptions? Yes. But generally, phones equals less freedom, more interruptions, more disturbances, more distractions, more things that you didn't sign up for being intruding upon your life, your day, your consciousness. Better to go without. You would be surprised at how much clearer your day is and how little those interactions that you thought were so meaningful, how much lighter and better the quality of your relationships might even be without them. Give it a shot. If it works, keep it up. If it doesn't, cool. You tried something. Maybe it'll help. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Jack. I post a video every single day of 2024. If this was helpful, give it a like so the algorithm shows you more things like it. If you want to see more of my stuff, subscribe. You know how this works. If you think someone would benefit, share it with them. If you like something I said, if you hate something I said, if something I said wasn't clear, leave a comment and I will get back to you when I when it suits me. But I will get back to you. I will endeavor to do so. And I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much. All the best. See you tomorrow.